Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to be speaking to Zwift ambassador Kate Verano and we're going to take on stage 8 of the Tour de Zwift. We're also going to talk through all things women's cycling and about creating communities on Zwift. So let's go! So these events are really fun. This is the Tour of Zwift. It's a annual event we do every year. I think this is our fourth or I think it's our fourth year doing it. Um, the Tour of Zwift is an eight stage event. Each stage runs for a couple days and it goes through all the different worlds of Zwift. So it's a great way of exploring all the different routes. Uh, and it's super fun because it's our most popular event. So you get in these giant packs, giant pelotons. So always people to ride with. Um, they're kind of Fondo style. So if you want to race it, you can race it. Um, but you can also just group ride, just fun social ride. So it's kind of for everybody. Um, each stage has multiple distance options. So, uh, and you know, we're trying to encourage people to complete the uh, whole tour, all eight stages. And it's a great way to kick off your year of fitness. Just to give the people watching at home a bit of insight, could you tell us a bit about who you are and how you're involved with Zwift? Sure. So my name is Kate Verano. Um, I am the Director of Content and Women's Strategy at Zwift. Um, this May, it'll be six years at Zwift. Uh, and I got started at Zwift um, running the Zwift Academy program, which is a global talent ID program that we launched uh, six years ago, uh, where we held a competition on the platform in Zwift to find the next female pro. We partnered with Canyon SRAM Racing, one of the best world tour teams in the world. And uh, we basically ran a talent ID competition in Zwift to find the next pro. Uh, it was super exciting and uh, kind of kicked off our women's community in Zwift. That's really cool. So I imagine in the beginning of the Zwift Academy, it must have been quite, quite difficult and quite unknown. What sort of obstacles did you face in creating the Zwift Academy and how did you overcome that? Yeah, it was really interesting. There was a lot of naysayers. There was a lot of people kind of thinking, this is kind of risky. You know, how are you going to find an indoor rider that's going to jump into the world tour? Um, but we just saw Zwift as like just an incredible platform to, you know, give people an opportunity that might not be seen before to show what they're made of. Um, and it was just really fun. Uh, so that, that first winner uh, was Leah Thorvalson. Uh, she jumped into the, the Women's Pro Peloton on Canyon Sram. And, uh, you know, her, some of her first races were in Belgium. It was nuts. Um, but she uh, really proved the concept. And every year the competition gets steeper and steeper. So it's, um, it's pretty incredible. It, it went from uh, that first year we had a thousand women join the program. Um, the next year we opened it up to men and women and we partnered with the men's pro team as well. Um, and this past year we had 150,000 wow. compete in Zwift wow. Academy. And the winners now go on to ride world championships. Uh, they podium uh, world tour races. It's just incredible. So it's been it's becoming a really a proven you know pathway to the pros. Uh, I think it's something that people look forward to each year. Uh, really really exciting program to be a part of. It's definitely very cool to see, and it was it, it's cool to see Zwift pushing the boundaries in that way. Why do you think it is so important to Zwift to be pushing the boundaries, especially when it comes to women cycling? Yeah, well I think. But early on with the Zwift Academy program, you know, it was cool to see how much attention that program got. Um, and it really, that partnership with Katie and Sram has built on year after year. And we saw a real opportunity in Zwift. Like we have a virtual world. We can create the world of cycling that we want to be a part of. And there's no reason that women can't have the same opportunities as men. So. Uh, from the get-go, starting with the Zurich Academy program, starting with, uh, that was just a uh, women's program to, to start. When we started doing uh, elite and pro racing in Zwift, 
We offered equal distances, equal prize purses, equal broadcast, because like, why not? You know, there's no reason not to. And it just, you know, it showed that the audience is there, the action is there, the talent is there. Um, you know, just the, just the opportunity needed to be there. So, and we've been just so pleased with how women have taken to the platform, you know, from grassroots through pros. Um, it just seen it as an opportunity to connect with one another, to connect with fans, with, with sponsors. Um, it's, you know, Zwift is, Zwift is for everybody. It's, it's pretty cool. It's really, really awesome to see so many women coming into the sport through, through Zwift and also the opportunities that they have with stuff like the Zwift Academy. I want to talk a bit more about women's cycling actually in terms of the introduction of the Tour de France for Femmes. So do you want to tell me a bit about Zwift's involvement with that? Well, this is incredibly exciting. Hold on, I'm just getting over this hill. <laughs> um, so during COVID, um, you know, the Tour de France, we weren't sure what was happening with it. And we had been in chats with the ASO and we decided to host a virtual event in Zwift, a virtual Tour de France to, uh, you know, give the racers a chance to compete uh, try a little bit of a different format. Um, so in it was two years ago that we did that, and it was really successful. And we had equal broadcast, equal prize purse, and equal distances for the men and women. And it was it was broadcast widely, uh, you know, all over the world. And each day we actually switched it up, men and women. The first day, the men would be the first race on the second day the women will be the first race on and the audience was incredible and the racing was incredible and it just kind of proved the concept that you know once given the opportunity you know the women's racing is just as viable just as exciting as the men's and i think it kind of showed the aso the world that this is something that we need to explore more of so it kind of paved the path for those conversations to start about hey women need a bigger presence at the Tour de France. You know, they haven't really had, uh, you know, a multi-stage race since like the 80s. And that one did not get the same kind of uh, broadcast and same kind of treatment as the men's race. So we have this opportunity to be a four-year title sponsor. It's the Tour de France Femme of X Zwift. And we feel like this is gonna be the pinnacle race of the season, you know, and it's gonna give women the opportunity to have that world stage. We know the action's gonna be so good. The racing's gonna be phenomenal. The personalities are so exciting. The teams, I mean, it's gonna be incredible competition. And, you know, we saw the opportunity. We've, we've uh, Zwift is growing and, and to have that opportunity to influence the world of cycling outside of the virtual game is incredibly exciting and something that we take as a real responsibility and opportunity to, you know, to, to help, you know, shape the sport and help support the things that we feel are important to the growth of, of cycling worldwide. I loved what you said there about we have the opportunity to create the cycling community and world that we want. And I think that's super important. I just want to ask you, how much do you think the Tour de France for Femmes of X Zwift is going to move the needle for women's cycling? Oh man, so, so hugely. So it's something like 75% of viewership in cycling every year is centered around the Tour de France. And women have not really had that opportunity to be seen there. So for the first time, that audience will be, you know, dialed in, will be, you know, will be following the action, watching the racing. I think the Women's Tour de France is perfectly placed. It's starting the final day of the men's. So as the men, the men's race culminates in Paris, finishes with like Grand Panache in Paris, the women's race starts with that backdrop, you know, 
Arc yeah. de Triomphe, you know, Eiffel Tower, Champs say all, you know, all the hullabaloo, all the media. And that's how the, the stage will, that, that's how the stage race will start. What is Zwift doing to get people excited for the Tour de France Femmes of X Zwift? We have just signed a deal to sponsor Perry roubaix Femme for the next four years. So at 100 days to go for Tour de France Femme, we're going to get people just tuned in to, you know, Women's World Tour with the best one day race, Perry roubaix Femme. Um, it's going to be thrilling and I think it's just going to get people on that bandwagon leading into Tour de France Femme. Oh my gosh. So we're really excited about that. You know, it's uh, it's it's just all about, you know, one of the biggest talking points last year of Paris-Roubaix uh, Femme, the first edition was last year, race started in 1896. Um, but one of the big talking points last year was the women's prize purse was a tiny fraction of the men's. So we're gonna hope our sponsorship of the race um, is going to really help amend that and just get more people, more sponsors, more media on board with, like I said, giving the Women's World Tour the, the attention and the coverage they deserve. Honestly, I'm getting like kind of goosebumps actually thinking about it. And I just know the same as you, a lot of us have known that women's cycling is a spectacle to behold. And I think it's, yeah, the world's going to see it for sure. So I want to talk a bit more about communities in Zwift because Zwift's done a really great job of helping women find their people and inspire women within cycling and the Zwift community. How does Zwift serve other communities on the platform? Yeah, Zwift, we are nothing without our community. Um, it is really what separates us from anything else out there. Um, we're built by our community. We're responsible to our community. Um, and for us, it's all about creating ways for our community to connect with each other, uh, to grow their space on Zwift, to, you know, to, to, you know, I mean, it's a platform where the whole world can ride together. A lot of, uh, a lot of people don't live in places where they have a great community or they have safe roads. So to be able to log on to Zwift and like at any hour, you know, there's, you know, multiple different kinds of rides and races and workouts that you can join and it's super social. So we found these communities just grow on Zwift. People started like, a, you know, first couple years, they just started a, sort of a club or a team or they brought their team from outside, inside to ride on Wednesdays together. And they grow and like some of these clubs are thousands and thousands of riders strong, just phenomenal group rides, uh, you know, you see, all the flags down on the right hand side of the screen all over the world i mean it's super exciting when you when you see that um so it's just uh you know just a way for cyclists to connect i mean that's my favorite part about it, is the social side of it um, and you just see all different kinds of communities um you know all levels of cyclists uh just a really, there's just so much diversity on the platform it's really incredible I think another cool thing, just to just for the viewers at home, I'm currently in the UK, and you are <laughs> you're in America, and we're both we're actually riding together right now. So I think that's just another one of the joys of Zwift. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. How does Zwift grow communities on the platform? Well, this is a really cool thing: is, is Zwift is a platform, and it's designed for the community. So. I think what we're trying to do is really create the most inclusive space in cycling. But right now in the game, we're riding next to a rider with one of our pride kits on. Uh, we have an awesome pride on series every June that celebrates our LGBTQA I plus community. And they're the most fun rides of the year. It just gives people a chance, you know, to be who they are in Zwift. You know, and that hasn't always been, uh, you know, cycling hasn't always been the most inclusive space. It's an intimidating sport. It had a type, it had rules. And there's no rules in Zwift, you know? And those rides, those pride rides, you know, you had members of the pride community, you had moms and dads that are there in support of their children, 
or their brother or their sister. And it just, it was, it's like, it's just incredible. The community building goes on. Like the, the amount you can share, um, you know, in a, in a bike ride and in a social ride with people like around the world, it's just, it's really incredible. And I think that anybody that's willing to invest in the community is with, you can find so many different types of riders and communities, you know, they're, they're gonna be close to your heart, you know, whether you wanna go super fast or whether you're, you know, you're a climber or whether, you know, you wanna find all the Dutch riders, you know, whatever you want, like Zwift, there's, there's something in Zwift. Right now, we just launched uh, our second year of the Black Celebration Series. And that's our way of amplifying voices um, and, you know, creating more representation on the platform. Uh, storytelling around the stellar black athletes we have on the platform. You could do their workouts. You can listen to their stories on podcast rides. Um, we have just an incredibly diverse community and we work really hard internally. It's a, it's a big, um, big part of our values is to create that inclusive space. Yeah, I, I really like, we had a chat before this, before this ride and you said, you know, whoever you are, you can find your crew. And I think that's, that's honestly part of the joys that cycling can bring. Right. And uh, with Zwift being a modern platform, I can see why it's so important. Why is championing community really important for yourself, but also for, for Zwift? I think it's, it's about the future of cycling. You know, um, the future of cycling is not the old European raceway, quite honestly. You know, it's a, it's a sport for everybody. It's a sport that brings people together. Uh, you know, you can be as competitive as you want and you can also be as social as you want. And it introduces people to new places, new experiences, new friends, new fitness. And, you know, that's what we can do in Zwift. It doesn't have to be any one thing. And that's, a, that's the beauty of the sport. I mean, I, I'm so in love with the sport because it just, it's the gift that keeps on giving. You know, just like, you know, the just different meeting people all around the world. Now, like traveling again, but even not being able to travel the last two years, I can't believe how many people I've connected with on this platform, you know? Yeah. So I think that the, the whole sport is going in a direction, you know, that's, that's super exciting and much more accessible. And that's what's with it. So I think that, you know, it's, it's gotta be an uh, industry-wide effort. It's not just like us in the corner doing something. I think that there's so many great companies and sponsors and communities that are creating more space and just making cycling just so much more approachable, you know, and friendly and fun. You know, there's always room for the racing. I love the racing, you know? but there's so much more to cycling. Oh, definitely. And I think I'm happy to see, a, you know, an industry-wide shift towards that. And Zwift, of course, is, is a big part of that. For those at home who are watching and inspired to get involved, what would you suggest they do? Yeah, I think you got to check it out. Um, we have a free trial. Um, you know, you do need a trainer. Um, you need a trainer in a device um, but it's uh, there's there's tons of like you can you know find out a lot of information at Zwift.com of course but there's also tons of fun YouTube videos uh, there's a wonderful ambassador in the UK Katie Kukabara who does some really fun videos for new newbies and people that are just trying to figure out Zwift um, you know I think even just like downloading the app and scrolling through the events and getting a taste for what the platform has to offer we have a whole bunch of fun worlds to ride in everything from we're riding through like central park in new york right now but we also have like a fantastic island with dinosaurs it's such a fun platform and of course we have some incredible paris and uh france maps um that we'll be utilizing a lot this year yes so yes. i'd say test it out uh you know there's it's, we are a virtual uh you know a virtual platform so you can imagine the resources out there to learn about Zwift are endless. We have such an enthusiastic community. Um, but you can find out all the essentials at Zwift.com, but then tap into the community too, because that's the, 
that's the real gold in Zwift. Definitely. And hey, we, we will see you on Zwift, I'm sure. Yeah, such a pleasure, Kira. Thank you very much, Kate. Have a good day. All right, right on.